Hi, for those of you who know me, I do like to do a lot of photography, specifically I love to take macros, um, macro photography or micro um, in the Nikon world, as I shoot Nikon, um, is basically what it means is one to one ratio. It's very close up photography and a lot of times you can take pictures of not a whole flower, but even just the stamen of the flower and it can look like things can look like a whole nother world. Um, you'll find insects that you never knew existed, um, all sorts of things. It's, it's quite fun. Um, I have a spray bottle here because unfortunately we don't have a lot of dew. It's about 9 o'clock a.m. and dew wasn't, was, it hasn't been a humid day today. Um, and, but needless to say I have my camera. Um, I have a strobe just in case that I need it, although I won't be using it today. Not a strobe, I should say my um, off-camera speed light. But specifically what I have here is I'm shooting with a Nikon D300S and I also have specifically a micro or a micro lens. It's a Nikkor VR vibration reduction, um, 105mm 2.8 and that's on full frame. With this camera it's a 1.5 crop ratio so it, it shows it a little bit closer than a 1 to 1 ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and walk over where I'm going to start taking the shots. It might get as as you come and follow me, it might get a little noisy because of the cars, but I hope it'll be worth your while to show you a little bit of what I do and how I do it. Okay, so I'm looking around here and actually I'm finding a lot of different things to take photos of. There's these beautiful flowers when I came out this morning, actually um, I got home, my first thing I noticed was these flowers that I had never seen. I don't know if they're weeds, you can go closer, I don't know if they're weeds or what they are, but um, they definitely are in a unique location being right on the street, so I need to be a little careful because there are cars. What I'm going to do first before I take any photographs, I'm just spray very lightly. Um, sometimes you can put just a little bit of glycerin in on the water. You can also put a little bit of an oil in the water. Um, I haven't done that today only because I don't want to affect my plants at all. I don't want to kill them. <laughs> but I do want to give the look that it's nice morning dew and it's just very, very pretty. It picks up the, the camera. It allows the camera to pick up the photos very nicely. So. What I'm going to do first, I'm turning my camera on. So I'm going to point it at my flower. And I want to shoot, generally when I shoot, for, um, if I want to shoot the entire, um, if I want to shoot the entire flower and have it be yeah. completely in focus, yeah, what I generally try to do, it's going to be do this, that means to tell the cars to slow down as we're coming around the hill. But basically, what I want to do is I want to basically shoot in focus, um, but have a little bit of a soft edge. So generally 2.8 is not going to be enough um, of an aperture for me. Aperture is almost like the eye of the pupil. So as you can see, the sun just got brighter, which is nice because it will allow me to shoot at a higher f aperture, a narrower opening, um, which will allow me to get more of the image. And when I shoot, flowers, usually I like to shoot them dead on, um, almost from above in a sense, and I usually go for the highest flower. But generally speaking, macro photography, the lens is very specific. You can actually shoot from any point of the lens where you want to focus using your, um, with Nikon I have 51 um, choices, I can limit that to 11. Um, I'm not sure what it is on Olympus or the cameras or or Canon for that matter, but um, but generally I generally use the, the center spot and then I crop if I need to, simply because I found that on this lens that is where it focuses best. Also at 2.8 it's not as sharp as I'd like to be. Um, I find usually at this range, I usually shoot at about like a 3 to anywhere from a 3.3 .3 to a 5.6. So I'm gonna, I'm shooting in full manual meaning I'm not allowing the camera to make any decisions for me. And at 5.6 and an exposure of 30th 
of a second, it's still extremely overexposed, meaning the image would show as white. Now, I always make sure that my ISO is set at the lowest possible. In this case, on the 300S, um, the Nikon 300S, it's 200. And Nikon does allow you to go lower. However, if you do that, what you're doing is it's almost like digitally um, increasing your size. In this case, you're digitally decreasing your ISO. And you don't want to do that because it's going to cause noise that's not necessary. So, okay, so I'm going to, first thing I'm doing is I'm actually getting in the way of the light. So I'm moving so that the light is allowed to hit the flower. Okay. Now, when you focus, notice how I just shifted. I shifted because we have these concrete, um, what we created for a sidewalk, if there's no other explanation. And when I first focused on the camera, even though my exposure is correct, what's happening is I'm seeing this weird white ghost, so to say. You can't see it, you just know that the color is there. And so what I'd rather have is just the all green from the grass below. So this is why I'm doing it at this angle. Generally when I shoot, it's very important. Um, if you're shooting at a low speed, or even not a low speed, but a low f-stop, um, again, I'm shooting at a 5.6 right now. Um, you have to be really careful. Now, technically, most people will use a macro. I don't have patience for macro. I also get very um, fluttered, so to say. Like, if what happens if a butterfly passes my way? I want to be able to shoot the butterfly. I don't want to be right on the So, I generally try to shoot at a high f-stop, which will allow some forgiveness, but I'll also try to shoot as well at a high speed. So, the sun, we got the sun again. And right now, I'm going to just take the whole flower. Now, you'll notice you hear three shutters go off. I do that because the first usually is a little bit of handshake. And by that time, as long as I'm breathing in when I take the shot, what I get is a very nice um, exposed image that is sharp and detailed. So I'm going to breathe in, hold my breath, and there we go. Okay, now I'm centering directly on the flower. Now, that time I took the entire flower. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get in close. Now I'm still in my own shadow. Now one of the problems that I have here, and I'm going to show you, I can focus on, now the flower, if you notice, is moving a little bit. So that basically means I need a higher shutter speed and I'm gonna increase also my f-stop. Now I do have a contraption. There's an actual thing that actually you get spent $50 for and it allows you to hold the flower in place, but it's not really something that I have the patience for to do right now. So. Sometimes I will just hold the flower in my hand, but I generally want the flower to be as still as possible. We do have some wind conditions today, and that's not ideal, however. But we're going to work with what we have. Fortunately, it's fairly sunny. So if I bring my F to 8, I have 1 25th of a second which allows me some forgiveness. And again, I'm going to shoot the flower, slow down this flower from moving a little bit from the noise of the earth from the traffic of the cars, get rid of that green spot, get rid of Alan's leg and his socks. Okay, at this point, do this when all else fails I generally don't like to mess with nature but this is what we're going to do I'm going to take my trusty water bottle I'm also going to take my trusty flower okay we're going to walk back and let's see around the yard one follow me and I'll show you what I'm going to do